Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do uh, multiple exposure in Photoshop Elements. I'm using Photoshop Elements 10, but a lot of these things um, are very relevant to previous versions of Photoshop Elements and full version of Photoshop, of course, as well. Um, first thing I'm going to assume is that you've got your photographs ready, um, however many that may be. That could be, obviously, at least two, um, but any number beyond that. I'm going to be using three. Now, first thing to do is to open those three images. So I'm going to use File, Open and choose those three images. That's the three images there. Click on open and those three images will open. Now I'm going to merge these three images. These are just snapshots I took on my mobile phone yesterday while waiting to go into a meeting. Um, so they're not particularly uh, magnificent but um, they will do for the purposes of this uh, demonstration. First of all I'm going to choose which one is going to be the base layer. Um, and I'm going to choose, I think perhaps choose that layer, might be quite nice. It's sort of quite textured and abstract, might add, might be quite a nice background to the images. So once I've chosen that background layer, I'm actually going to go File, Save As, and save it as a Photoshop document, which is a .psd. Um, a Photoshop document can contain layers, which of course is what we're going to do here. Uh, and I'm just going to call this something that makes sense. So I'm going to call it multi exp01. And save. Okay, now I need to add my other layers to that base layer. So go to another one. And I'm just going to use the command A to select all and command C to copy back to the base layer and command V to paste. So that's, as you can see in the layers palette here, uh, positioned above the background layer. I'm now going to go into the third image. Again, select all, copy, and back to the base layer, and paste. In the layers palette now, you can see the one background layer, layer one, and layer two. So three layers all in all. I'm actually going to click on the background layer now, and I'm going to double click on it. Um, which will change it from a background layer to just a standard layer, which means we can change the opacity of that layer. Uh, and I'm going to just call that layer 0, as it has done by default, and OK that. So now means I can change the opacity of that layer as well, uh, with this little slider here in the Layers palette. Um, but I'm actually going to create one more layer, and I'm going to call this Background. Okay, and I'm just going to click on that layer and drag so it's positioned at the very bottom of those, those layers. One last thing here, edit, fill layer, and I'm going to choose to fill it with white. Click OK. And now you can see that background layer has gone from being transparent to being white. And that means that I can adjust the opacity of these three layers here and still have a white background to the image. First of all, I'm just going to make every layer 25% strength in the opacity. Now, at the moment, we can only see the very top layer. Change the next layer to 25%. And now, when I change the opacity of this layer, which sits above all the other layers, you'll see that you'll be able to see the other layers come through. And again, I'm going to choose 25% here. OK, so now we can see some of all of those layers appearing. Um, we may now want to tweak um, this opacity level on, on these layers so we can see more or less of some layers. Um, and it depends which layers you, you feel are most important. This top layer here I really like because it's got this area of um, the building with the scaffold and the builders on it as well. So I think that's important that that part shows. That's a key part of the image for me. On layer two, let's just turn that layer off you've got these little eye icons on each layer and if you click them you can actually turn the, the, the visualness of that layer off um, so you can see the underneath layer. So that's quite useful sometimes. So it's actually this area on layer one that I quite like as well which is some of the building um, and that's quite a key element as well. So getting the opacity of these three layers right is, is quite crucial. As I mentioned, this layer zero in the background here is just kind of a base layer to it. Uh, and that could be quite faint, I think. I'm going to bring it down to about 20. 
And then I need to bring these layers up and I'm going to try perhaps about 45 and 45 on this one. Now this layer zero is very faint in the background, but it does add a little bit of texture and detail to the image. So we're really getting somewhere now. Um, if we wanted to, um, we could now say that that's job done um, and flatten that image, uh, i.e. combine those layers to make it one flat image and save it as a JPEG. So this is the most basic way that you can create a multiple exposure. You're basically creating a document with multiple layers and adjusting the opacity of each layer so that you see more or less of the image below it. And you can try reorganizing these layers as well. You can literally cl click on a layer and drag it underneath another layer, and move them around. So this is quite good a good practice to do because actually by doing that you might find that it really transforms the image. Uh, and again, just experiment with those, the opacity layer to show more or less through. Like so. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that we're happy with this file as it is. And I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to click save. Or file save. Um, now that's save, saved as a layered uh, file, a PSD file. I'm actually going to show you how to now merge all those layers and save it out as a JPEG. And you literally click on this little tab here on the layers palette and you drag down and click flatten image. And you can now see it's gone, gone just to one background image. So it's now possible to save that. I'm going to choose save as and I'm going to choose a JPEG this time. And file save. It's now going to give me the option to ask me what quality of JPEG I want to save it. In this instance, I'm going to choose maximum 12. Click OK. And then that is your multiple exposure done. So that's relatively straightforward. But actually, what we're going to look at now is something a bit more advanced. We're going to look at creating multiple exposure, but actually using masks to bring more or less of some parts of the image through. Um, which can be quite useful. So I'm just going to close these images now. Choose File Open. And I'm going to choose the three original images. So these three here. And we're back to where we started. Three main images. Again, I'm going to choose this as the main background. File Save As. And I'm going to choose the Photoshop format. Dot PSD and give it a name. And I'm going to call this multi exp02. Oh, the first one 01. So I'm just calling this 02 and save. What I did before was I double clicked on the background layer and it defaulted to layer 0 and I then okayed that. So that's now not a background layer. So I'm going to create another background layer by clicking on the little tab here and creating new layer. And I'm going to call this one background, if I can spell. OK that. Click on that layer in the Layers palette and drag it below the other. And then I want to fill it with white. So fill layer from the Edit menu. Choose white. OK. And that's done. So I've now got a background layer, which is plain white. I've got my first layer, which is actually called Layer 0. And I'm now going to add additional layers. So this is going to be one. Select all and copy it. Go to my file and paste. To my third and final image, select all, copy, back to the original one and paste. So again, I've got these three, three files. What's important to me is, I mentioned before, this area here um, with the scaffold on the building and the, and the workers. Just going to turn that layer off for a second. On this layer here, layer one, what's important to me here is this building. And then of course turn that layer off. And the final layer, I've got this background of the of the branches, which I think should hopefully work quite well. I'm going to leave this first layer at 100% opacity. I'm then going to go into the next layer and I'm going to just bring the opacity down to 75 this time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask. That's fairly easy to do. Go into the layer menu, create a layer mask. 
I'm going to put reveal all at first. Now you can see that this has added something else to that layer and at the moment it's a layer mask which is actually filled with white and we're going to actually paint over our image with black. You can see the colours in the tool palette here are black in the foreground and white in the background. You can actually toggle those back and switch them around by using the little uh, arrow icon next to them. In this scenario I actually want to paint in black. Um, so I'm going to select black as my foreground colour and I'm going to select the brush tool. Now when you select a tool like this you're given some tool options above um, and what I'm going to do is choose a brush size first of all. Um, if I mouse over the image you can see the brush size and I'm just going to change that very slightly. I'm going to change it to about 600. You can type in there or you can just click and drag the little slider. Um, I'm going to choose 600 pixels. I can choose an opacity as well for how much black I want to paint over. And actually it might be useful not to do 100% but to do about 50. That means then what we're going to paint over we're masking to about 50% ratio. Um, and you'll see what happens when I do that. So I'm literally going to paint on this layer here, this white layer. And you'll see by doing that I'm revealing more of the layer below. Just going to do that a bit more. You can see if I paint over the building that the building is gradually disappearing more and more as I paint over it. Um, that's because we're revealing more of the layer underneath. Actually, I don't want to do that in this situation. I'm just going to undo that last move. And go back to how it was and like I said it's actually the area that that doesn't contain the building that is most um, that I most want to re uh, remove so here I go just paint around this area here revealing more of the layer underneath it's really straightforward I'm keeping the mouse pressed down all the time while I do this just paint away that area like so If I wanted to, I could now release the mouse. I could actually mask more. We can look at the mask now. You can see that it's white in that corner where the building is and gray everywhere else. That's because I used a 50% opacity. Um, that's why it's not that area is gray as opposed to being black. If I paint again, I'm gonna be adding to that mask more and that's gonna make that, that gray mask go towards black. It'll be darker. And what it's doing is it's showing more area below through that mask. You can see that grey area has gone darker. <clears throat> now if I'd have used 100% opacity of course it would have gone completely black. But I do want to see some of the other image underneath. Okay that's that part. I'm then going to click on the next layer above, turn that layer on. I'm going to make this about 75% and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask do that move. I'm going to add again in the layer menu, layer mask, reveal all, and again simply use the brush tool to paint over the areas that I want to mask. And that area is going to be the areas that doesn't contain the building and the scaffold and the workers. Let's bring that down here. Again, revealing some of that building coming through there by doing that. release the mouse. I'm actually going to reveal some more of that building here because I think that's a, an important element of the building. So again I'm just going to paint a bit more over, blend that a little bit into that other building. So now I can start to see some of some of the building on one side of the pantiles and um, the building on the other side as well. If I wanted to I could actually start to bring in this this branch that comes across here which is quite a nice element as well. I can just paint in the, the elements that I want. So suddenly this becomes a bit more of a, a, a pleasing image and again you can still play around with the opacity of these images or layers until you get the right balance.
once you're happy save the file keeping all of those layers because then you can then go back to that layered file and edit it and change any any part of it that you want but what I would also do is choose to flatten the image and then you've got one image that's your complete multiple exposure if you wanted to if you really want to sort of make these images come together you could perhaps consider using the enhance menu um, to adjust lighting maybe brightness and contrast just to make the image a bit more contrasty as one and that might really help as well that's the last thing I'm going to do and just save my flattened image as a JPEG Elements has already added this edited one to the end of the file name which is absolutely fine just gives me a, an indication that something's been edited on that image and save again choose maximum quality 12 and OK and that's your complete multiple exposure Thanks very much.